you know, you go up to the local bar or you go into the VFW and you hear other relatives talk about it. So I really learned a lot of the history from either my family or from other family members that work down here. My grandpa would have been hired by Ellis Brown, uh, who founded this foundry. Well, Ellis Brown, the man, him and another guy started this place, him and the Clings, I guess. Back in what? 39 or whenever it was. I know it started in 39. Ellis Brown, my grandfather, uh, Harold Heckerman and Bill Kling all worked at separate foundries, I think in Plymouth and in South Bend. And they wanted to make some castings on the weekend, so they used Bill Kling's garage. Even though we were incorporated in 1939, they started this two to three years before that, making castings on weekends. Dad was still in high school when, uh, when they were doing that, so he would help them out and he worked down here on weekends and after school, help out any way he could. Uh, I'm not sure whether he wanted to or he was forced to, he never told me that. They built the foundry themselves, they built their own bricks, they used mortar and wheelbarrows, pressed their bricks, set them, did the footers, so they built everything from scratch. And they also built a building where we had our original foundry at, which is just a few feet from us. My grandfather went to the war in World War II. Uh, he came back and you know started working here after World War II. When World War II was over, we had a large number of World War II vets that came back to Bremen all at the same time, and they were given six months pay, and they would uh, pretty much play all day and, and drink at Hoople's, a local bar, one of the oldest taverns in Indiana. And Grandpa Brown went up to Hoople's after about a month of this, and told these guys, okay guys, it's been a month, it's long enough, it's time for all you guys to go to work. I need you all down at the foundry at six o'clock tomorrow morning. That's how he got a big crew of men that all started at the same time. These guys would come in and, you know, they were, you know, smoking a cigarette and with their t-shirt on and their shoes and just a really different way of life. It was a good place to work back then. You made good money and everything back a long time ago. You you made good money here. Yeah, I started here in 1955, and there was good people to work for. I come here 18 years old, and uh, when I first come here, I was going to work through the winter, <laughs> you know, make some money to go someplace else, and it just never happened. I just, I just learned to like it. One thing we could always say about Bremen Casting, when there was no, nobody else working, Bremen Casting was hired, and they always been good people to work for and uh, reliable, you could depend on them. Castings has been good to me, and they've helped raise my family, and so I guess you can't ask for anything better than that there. This place has been a good place for me to work. Uh, you know, and the people don't understand how this works, you know, everything I got, I owe it to this place because I earned my money working here. The difference between now and when I was down here as a youngster is, is miles. In fact, I can't imagine what uh, these young kids would do if, they had, if I had to bring them in and show them the way we used to work down here. You would not believe how hot and, 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 and everything it was out there and dangers. So much changes in Bremen Casting. I was talking to my wife last night. I said, you can walk on the floors now where I said, it, it, it didn't used to be that way. You had to walk through th th uh, dirt deep, you know, and everything. The place was absolutely filthy. If you looked up in the sky at certain times of the day, you would see this black plume of smoke coming out of the foundry. When I first started there, you wouldn't believe how dirty it is. It, it's, it's clean now, real clean. Nowadays, when you come in here, it's spotless. Then we started getting some real good ventilation in here. In 72, we put in our first pollution system, which meant that we only were putting out steam after that. And that was a very major advancement uh, in, uh, in cupola design and in pollution systems. It really changed the, uh, the environment in here tremendously. You barely see any black dirt anymore at all. There have been a lot of changes over the years since I've been here, you know. There have been a lot of changes, I mean, just unbelievable. When I first started here, everything was on the floor, all little square molds, and they, they called it a stand, a stand molder, I believe it was. We had to turn all the molds by hand. It was definitely a lot rougher than it is now. We did all of our molding by hand, we did all of our dumping the molds after you've poured molten iron in it. We would dump those molds by hand. You'd done everything back by hand when I first started here. You come along with the hand nails, 
later on, and then we would pour the iron in. I cut the gates with a saw, and, and if we, I didn't have to saw them, then we broke them off with a hammer. Well, I worked 50, 60 hours just about every week. I, I used to work 16, 17 hours a day. Well, you, you can tell if, if anybody's going to stay. When you work with them for a while, you, you, you'll know. You'll know right away. You'll know in two hours where he's going to stay or not. If somebody new started, they they play play uh, games with them, like a guy would take and tell them to, I'd go out and get me some striped putty to put on my core, and there ain't no such thing as striped putty. I see guys hire in and walk through the walk through the shop, walk from one from the lower end of the shop all the way through and right on out the door. When they did put in the automatic machines, it made it made the work a, a lot easier. Went to Duck Dole. And uh, got the hunters in. The biggest thing I would probably say is when they got the hunters in. I would say the biggest change when they went to the hunters. Hunter or whatever you call it, that molding machine. Now we we dump them with a turntable and onto the shaker, all that's automated. Make about 1,800 molds a day, each one of the machines. You needed to update and go faster. And the machines was going to do it, and so that's the way they went. And I think that was the biggest change. People wanted quality, you know, and then we always tried to put out quality castings. Thinking about the legacy of the family and the tradition of the, of the foundry, you know, I knew that I wanted to come back. I've always wanted to run this company. I've wanted to run it with the passion that I have, my goals, my ideas. We had brought JB in. He had been here for quite a while, learning the operations. In 2005, I was out for dinner one night, and I was in January, and we were at a local restaurant eating, and he asked me to stop by afterwards, which I, I did think was kind of odd, especially being like 10 o'clock at night on a Friday night. I called him out to the house, uh, I think in a January, and said, how would you like to be president? We walked in, and he says, you know, what do you think about being president? And I'm like, president of what? And he's like, BCI, right? And he kind of looked at me, and he wasn't quite sure what to say, and uh, we made him president the next day. He announced it to his staff, and uh, from there on, I was president, and he was CEO, and we made the announcement to all the customers, and it was a, it was a great transition period. You know, from my father, the, the, the advice that he really gave me, that his father gave him, was, you know, we treat everyone as family members here. It's really important that we treat everybody the same as far as being a family member and understanding the situations that people are in. It was more like family, you know, everybody, it was like one big family. Everybody knew everybody really well. Once you become a part of the BCI team, you're really a part of the family. We have a lot of multiple generations within the organization working in the foundry and in the machine shop. It just goes along with the family-owned business here at Bremen Castings, and I'm able to bring a member of my family into it. Since 1967, there's always been a Walter working here, and uh, <laughs> that's pretty unique, I think, also. Not everybody's a robot. You know, if somebody needs some time off, you got to understand. Somebody's going through a hard financial time, you know, let's work it out. If you want something here, all you have to do is ask for it. And that's kind of rare that it just don't happen that way. My fondest memories really are the people. Uh, I can remember I'd go to the women, I'd say, well, don't you think it's time to have another dinner? And they, they always liked that. I'm holding this photo in my hand, and down on the end here's Marge George. This here's Joyce Booker. This is Shorty Meissner. It was fun. I think Jim can remember doing that. He'd come out, him and Mike and the office would all come out, and it was just fun, don't you think, Jim? Yeah, it was. Uh, it, just that kind of stuff like that. I just like it. The operations is the heart of the company. Not only is that how and where the money is made, but that's where the people are. One of the things that I beat my drum to every day and I push down is, you know, about the status quo. Continuous improvement is about changing policies, procedures, and it's always evolving. We have to always evolve with the times. We can't stay in the same place with the same policies, the same procedures, and the same philosophies of operations. People here actually embrace the, the philosophy that status quo sucks. We're going to keep changing the game and we're going to keep adapting and moving forward. And uh, it's exciting to be a part of it. When we developed this, um, status quo is everywhere. Uh, it's in my house, it's in my life, it's in, in everyone's life. Uh, so what we tried to do is try to promote this to um, everyone that, hey, it does suck and we do need to make change. I know that, uh, that the leadership that is in place, the ownership that's in place, and the employees that we have 
are extremely capable of, of exceptional things. Is it easy? No, it's not easy. But we, we do find after we put a challenge out for ourselves and we accomplish that goal that uh, we're usually in a better place. Bringing iPads and uh, bringing you know Apple computers into a manufacturing facility and, and trying to really automate the way we do things uh, here, whether it's in management or out on the shop floor, was really important to me because uh, the foundry industry has always been looked at as, as being a, a, an older generation type industry. JB has been a hoot. Um, I, I just love his high techy um, look outlook on life and here in the company. They started talking about computers that uh, this place would never ever be able to run a computer system because it always has to be run this way. Well guess what? I was wrong. <laughs> if you're going to stay up with the, the times, you have to go high tech. We're always looking for new and innovative ways that technology can make us a better organization. We got automated out here and it really, it's really working well now. You know, a lot less people, uh, a lot more efficient. Now it's just click of a button and you can pull all this up and though I was afraid of it, it's radically made things far, far easier. So you walk around Bremen Castings today, whether it be in the foundry or the machine shop or within our maintenance department, you're going to see monitors everywhere and you're going to see, you know what's going on in the shop at all times, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The tough part about that, or the good part about that is, is people don't like change. Uh, we have to change. We know that. If we're going to be around five years from now, so being one of the older guys here, I'm continually pushing myself to, to want to embrace that change. It does take that unique person to come out of that mold and make change. If you don't like change, you're probably not going to like working here. So we really do try to promote change and we really like it and do it every day. And that's one of the reasons that we're in our fourth and going to be a fifth generation. Jordan's going to be graduating uh, college here soon and she's decided to come work at Bremen Castings and start her uh, her uh, full-time employment into the real world. She'll go through the same footsteps and uh, the same uh, the same training regimen that uh, the rest of us have gone through and we'll see what her passions are and what leads her to the future. It's going to be a pleasure um, to watch her create her legacy in the company and to watch what her vision is going to be and how she's going to create it. I really look forward to what the future has, even though it's really uncertain. Not many women in the manufacturing industry, but obviously that's a growing trend of, of change and we all like change here. But uh, you know, it's part of what family business is about. It's about going through those trials and tribulations and getting through it at the end of the day. And we've done it for four generations and hope to do it for the fifth. It's been pretty amazing um, to be able to take everything that I've learned here as a kid and relate it back to what they're trying to teach in classes at IU. The way I see uh, the future of our organization is, you know, the continued growth uh, both in capabilities and processes. Uh, you know, right now we're, we're capable of not only producing a casting for a, uh, a customer, but also machining that casting. The potential there for us to service our existing customers and new cu customers is we're a one-stop shop. We're going to be more than a foundry. Um, we're going to be more than a foundry and a machine shop. We're moving into assembly. We're moving into different manufacturing areas like the BCI Defense. This is one of our BCI Defense AR-15s. It's called an SQS-15. You know, with everything we do in our family, there's a lot of passion behind it. And BCI Defense is full of that passion between my grandpa, my dad, and myself. Our existing customers uh, are coming to us with more requests um, in machining, in assembly, uh, and diversifying our business. I think the growth potential of Bremen Castings is huge, which is a big reason why I'm here. As we continue to grow in those capabilities, we can then begin to uh, uh, to really focus on assembly and, and really looking at ourselves as an extension of our customer, a manufacturing extension, if you will, so that we can supply them with a, a, an extremely finished product. Every single tractor has a part made and machined in Bremen, Indiana. And all these employees out here and our team members and our family members, that's something that they can be proud of. I think the legacy of Bremen Castings is going to be one of simply embodying the American spirit. It's the idea that a small group of people can get together and make incredible things happen. 